Hey guys, Jason here with the One Stop How To Guys bringing you episode 10 of Advanced Drupal Development. Now in this episode, we are going to get our payment processor up and running. Now I know in the last episode we talked about maybe doing some other cool stuff with commerce, but um, that's actually only for a limited select amount of people. Not everybody's going to need an advanced color selector. So before we do anything like that, uh, I wanted to get the payment processor, at least for PayPal, up and running so that those of you who are kind of done with your store at this point can actually uh, start taking taking payments from your website. So what you're going to want to do is go over and download Commerce PayPal and get that onto your site. And then once you do, let's head over to our site and go over to the module section. And if we scroll all the way down here and then back up, it's the easiest way to find Commerce PayPal. All right, so here it is. There is a couple of things that we need to turn on in order to make this work, one of which is PayPal. And then the other uh, thing that we need to do is turn on the version of PayPal that you actually have. So if you have a pro PayPal account, you can turn that one on. Um, if you're just using a standard uh, free PayPal account, you're going to want to use the WPS option here. Now there are also options for uh, Express Checkout and some advanced payment flow stuff as well. Now one thing to note here, if you are using the free um, standard payment system from PayPal, there are a couple of modules that are not going to work with this, one of which is going to be Commerce Card on File and Reoccurring Payment Systems, uh, at, at least as far as the site goes. Um, and that is because you're going to be collecting your PayPal payments off-site. So what's going to happen is as you're checking out, you're going to get to the payment page. It's going to redirect you over to PayPal, and they're going to collect the funds and then send them back to um, to your website. So you're not going to be able to use the uh, reoccurring payment systems with this. So that's just a little note. Um, if you're just doing one-time payments, you, you're more than uh, set up to go here uh, with the standard account. I do believe with the PayPal Pro account, you can do uh, some of the reoccurring payment stuff through Drupal. All right, now that we have that on, we're going to go up to our store, configurations, and payment methods here. And you can see we still have our example payment method with that fake credit card that lets us check out. Uh, what we're going to want to do is enable our uh, PayPal system here. And now we have to do uh, a couple of things in the settings here. So we're going to click edit on that. And what you're going to see is that this is essentially just a rule. Um, and we're going to edit the action of that rule. Everything is fine in here. Now what we need to do is we need to add the email address associated with our PayPal account. Um, and I can't for the life of me remember what mine is off the top of my head. I have several uh, email accounts. So we're just going to do jason.blanda at gmail.com. And I do believe that is my actual PayPal account. So it needs to take in the email address of the account that you use to sign up with your PayPal. And then we need to switch this over from Sandbox to Live. Now you can do an entire Sandbox checkout for testing and make sure that it works, but you got to set up a, a PayPal Sandbox account, and, and that's more of a PayPal tutorial. We're just going to get this system in. So we're just going to switch it over to Live, and you can leave essentially everything else on. And that's it. Your PayPal checkout system is all set up. So now that we have this here, I seem to have some stuff in my cart. We can come in here. Um, all of my stuff is still the same. We're getting our shipping here. And now you can see when we get to the bottom of the page, we both have the PayPal and the example payment. We switch over to the example payment, we're going to get that example payment credit card again. Um, and we do not want to leave this on. If you do have to do some changes and checks again with your store flow, you might want to leave it on while you're testing. 
Um, but if you're done, you do want to make sure you come back in here to payment methods and you want to disable the example payment method. Otherwise, people are going to be able to check out kind of for free on your website and you don't want that to happen. So now we only have PayPal here and if we continue to the next step, we're going to get this screen. And within 10 seconds, it's going to redirect us over to PayPal. Um, and there you go. So now you can see we can fill out the credit card information, we can check out as a guest, we can sign in with our own PayPal account, and once we process this order, and um, it is going to kick us back to the website with the order confirmation page. You can see here that it carried over the same order number from the website that we were on. Um, we do have the price in there, uh, we have the product count and the quantity that we're ordering here. So it actually brought in all the information that we needed from our Drupal site uh, to PayPal uh, to keep organized records. I am going to go back here. Um, one thing to note, if, if you're done to that point, that is a live payment processor. So that will take the money from your credit card. So if you're testing or anything like that, um, just know that you're, you're actually going to get billed for that. Um, one thing that I do like to do, even though I'm always confident that that's set up right, is I will create a penny product, one that just costs one cent, and then I will check out with that and make sure that that money actually ends up in my PayPal account. Now, because it's only a penny, uh, PayPal is going to consume all of it with their fees, so you're going to end up with a, a zero dollar transaction, but you do want to make sure that that gets in there, so that might be something that you would like to do as well. And that's it. That is how easy it is to get the payment method up and running. Um, you just install the module, turn it on, enter your email address in, and switch it to live, and you are done. Um, just as a little side note, if anybody is interested or you're watching this before the end of today, the day that this video went live, um, and you're interested in video games and you're unaware, uh, GDQ is actually happening right now and it's streaming live on Twitch and they are raising funds for Doctors Without Borders. Um, they are currently at 800, just over $800,000, so if you would like to donate to that. Um, it's a great, great event, uh, great streams. Um, I would encourage you to hop on over there and make a donation or just watch some great live streams. Um, in the next episode, I noticed that we have some way out of date modules. So I'm going to show you and walk you through the process of updating a Drupal site so that we can get ourselves current. All right, guys, that's it. I'll see you in the next episode of Advanced Drupal Development. Later.